In this video, we specifically address hormonal control and in particular negative feedback, which is always the example we give in the endocrine system. However, let's just take a broad overview in case you get a tricky question. Hormone production is controlled by these feedback mechanisms, where the level of one hormone will either stimulate or inhibit the production of another. So there is positive feedback and there is negative feedback and let's begin with positive feedback. With positive feedback, it results in the stimulus being increased and also the response. So we consider oxytocin as an example. Oxytocin is this hormone that's secreted by the pituitary gland and it causes uterine contractions. And this is all kicked off by the stretching of the uterus near the end of pregnancy when the baby is pushing down on the cervix. So oxytocin is going to be secreted and it's going to result in more uterine contractions, which in turn leads to more oxytocin secretion and more contractions. So everything gets amplified, the stimulus, which was the stretching or those initial little contractions, and then also the response, the production of oxytocin and then further contractions. For your exams, you're mostly concerned with negative feedback. Negative feedback is also tightly linked to homeostasis. It's the main method of control for homeostasis. Negative feedback means that the stimulus will return to normal. So basically it's going to make everything go back to the way it should be. So for your exams, know what a feedback mechanism means. Know that negative feedback is the one you're going to discuss and you're going to give the example of thyroxine. Thyroxine is produced in the thyroid gland located on the front of the neck. Thyroxine regulates metabolic rate. When thyroxine levels are low, this stimulates the production of thyroid stimulating hormone TSH by the pituitary gland in the brain. TSH will then cause the production of thyroxine and when normal levels of thyroxine return, it will inhibit the production or secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone. When thyroxine levels are low, the pituitary gland secretes thyroid stimulating hormone. This then causes the thyroid gland to produce more thyroxine. When thyroxine levels are back to normal, these levels will then inhibit the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone. So normal levels of thyroxine will have a negative impact on the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone. So finally, give an account of the hormonal response to cold. This could be part of a question on homeostasis tied in with the endocrine system. If there was a drop in body temperature, it would be detected by the hypothalamus in the brain, the part of the brain that controls homeostasis. This would result in the pituitary gland being stimulated to produce thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone would then cause the thyroid gland to increase thyroxine secretion. This would then result in an increased metabolic rate and more heat would be produced as a result of this. The temperature will eventually return to normal. This is detected by the hypothalamus and thyroid stimulating hormone would be inhibited. This particular question would also be connected with the skin, so make sure that you know the structure of the skin. You can discuss piloerection, vasoconstriction, vasodilation and sweating. So the best of luck with all of that revision. Remember to do past papers and check the official marking schemes. Use your textbook. The very best of luck.